Hello there. In this video, we're going to have a look at the laws governing the arrival of a thug at someone's door. The first question we need to ask, and I've taken this from the National Bailiff of Vice.co.uk uh, Bailiff Frequency Arcs questions, because it seems to be quite comprehensive in the um, wording one have I are bailiffs immune from criminal liability and their response is no but in the alternative reality yes police institutionally resist crimes of complaints of crime committed by bailiffs some police officers even place bailiffs in a class above the law a civil matter the constable commits an offence under section 26 of the Criminal Justice Act and the Act Court Acts 2015. But the CPS, who are just as far away from these situations as you could possibly get, resist the complaints of bailiffs or police committing offences. This has created a disproportionately high level of tolerance of lawlessness among police and bailiffs under a belief a person who is a debtor for which I am not and the house is not and there is no court order is not entitled to court justice a two-tier criminal level and the court will be prejudiced even when the debt is not genuine but what if there is no debt at all and there is no court order at all. What is the person meant to do then? Can I proceed, bring proceedings against a bailiff for common assault or ABH? Yes, but you must report the offence in writing, which can include email to the police first. Yes, you must make it clear to the police that provisions 24 brackets 2 of Schedule 12 of the Tribunal's Courts and Enforcement Act was amended by the Crime and Courts Act of 2013, where the word crime is quite pertinent in this, that prohibited bailiffs from using any kind of force against people, which removed all immunity from criminal liability. Take no sorry police, they can be had for criminal liability. If the police fob you off, which you did sorry police, with excuses, you can make a complaint be laid before the Justice of Priests. Well, it's now nine months on because I've been trying to go through the correct processes. And quite honestly, this is a matter of changing the whole landscape of how people are treated by the police, by the CPS, letting off thugs attacking innocent people sitting at a magistrate's court for the question of reporting the suspect for the offence. Before a justice of the peace can consider the information, permission from the director of public prosecutions must be sought. But just a minute, director of public prosecutions thinks bailiffs are above the bloody law. So what protection has somebody who is being aggressively mentally attacked and intimidated if you have to go through this process because the police consider the bailiffs are above the law. Yes, I am angry. We then move on. Can I be arrested for using reasonable force to remove a bailiff? Well, seeing as he was illegally on my premises, theoretically yes. But remember, this person is disabled. He has only one usable arm. The other one? If I got into altercations, I could lose the use of my arm for the rest of my life. So that was not an option, and still not an option. The arresting officer is at risk of action being brought against for wrongful arrest and unlawful imprisonment. Fawkes and Chief Constable of Merseyside, 1998. Can bailiffs go to my old correspondence address? Well, we know bailiffs can go anywhere in England and Wales, paragraph 9a of the Schedule 12 of the Tribunal's Courts and Enforcement Act, 2007. 
enables a bailiff to take controls of good at address on the warrant, of which there was not a warrant on my address, or a writ of control, which there was not one for my address, or in the case of council liability, flooded out. Police bailiffs can also take enforcement steps where the debtor usually lives. Well, we then look at the um, Postal Act in the last one, and you can serve it on the recognised address. Not some random address, which is incorrect in Experience database. And like I say about Experience database, they record all addresses as an address, not a residential address or a postal address, or as described here, correspondence address. So again, he had no right to turn up and try and take my property for somebody else's debt using a correspondence address as a, to, to seize property. Because other than that, they could walk into a hundred accountants address, addresses to seize pro people's property when all they are is a registered company address. To take enforcement steps where the debtor usually lives and carries on a trade or business, which is scheduled paragraph 14. If a bailiff attends a correspondence address, then he cannot take control of goods. Well, the thug said he was going to get the big van and collect my goods and make me prove that I own the goods in my own home, own debt-free home, and yet no crime is being committed according to the police. He cannot take control because the debtor does not keep his goods there. A correspondence address is just that. If an occupant of a debtor's old correspondence address is harassed by bailiffs, then they can apply for an order under Section 3A of the Protection of Harassment Act 1997. But instead of being told that by the police when I reported the nine vehicles, they accused me of being paranoid and claimed they weren't bailiffs. And we will move on on the police actions later. Suffice to say at this stage, the police could not even record the fact it was six cars and three vans and not nine vans. And police standards do not accept that this factual error is anything wrong and stating that they are perfectly acceptable to decrime this situation. In closing, I would like to, for the viewer to consider the word recidivism. It refers to the proportion of offenders who commit one or more additional offences. Many persons who commit a first crime will progress to a pattern of repetitive crimes, offending. Certain groups will, will progress to worse crimes. Well, if a bailiff is not pulled up and told enough is enough, he will repeat his actions. Do you know what I mean by repeat his actions? He terrorised me for 80 minutes in a debt-free home. Where did he go on to when he left at 9, 9.20, 9.25 that morning? Did he go on to terrorise another person with the wrong address or the wrong location? How many people does he terrorise a year? because the police take no control over the activities of a known thug. I leave that as the final thought on this video.